good morning my dear student and welcome to the my channel that is easy chemistry by sbj today we will see the colligative properties in last lecture we have seen the solution and the concentration determination ways uh, for example the normality molarity molality then mole fraction etc ppm so today we will see the colligative properties colligative properties are the property of solution that depends only on the number of solute particles in the solution and not on the nature of the solute particles okay. as we know the solution solution is made up of of the solute plus solvent so the properties which depends on the nature of solute particle it is called as the colligative property if we write the definition of the colligative property then these are the properties of these are the properties of solution that depends on the number of solute particle in solution and and not on not on the nature of the solute particles not on the nature of solute particles means the colligative property changes with the concentration right the number of solute particle means the concentration as the concentration changes the colligative property is also changes there are four colligative property first is the lowering of vapor pressure second is the elevation in boiling point third is the depression of freezing point of the solvent in solution and the fourth is the osmotic pressure okay. so see in details the lowering of vapor pressure lowering of vapor pressure and raoult's law we will see in details right now so what is mean by vapor pressure first as we know if we take the uh, liquid in a container as we know the all liquids exhibit the tendency of for evaporation if the intermolecular forces of attraction are weak the liquids evaporate rapidly and are called as the volatile liquids for example the ethyl acetate is the most volatile liquid then ethyl alcohol acetone are also the volatile liquids okay due to the strong intermolecular forces of attraction lubricating oils are slightly volatile the gaseous state of the substance is called the vapor state as we know the liquid escaped from an open vessel by evaporation if we keep the liquid in open container then it escape due to the evaporation but if we take the liquid in a closed container the process of evaporation continue as we uh, can see uh, show here the evaporation is upward arrow shows the evaporation of the liquid is continue in case of the closed container the molecules of liquid escaping from the surface of the liquid and remains in the container above the surface of liquid right for example the molecules are escaped here and they are on the surface of the liquid these molecules of the vapor are in the continuous random motion right they are uh, wandering from one place to the another place they collide with each other and with the wall of the container and also with the surface of the liquid and return to the liquid state okay these evaporated molecules returns in the liquid state this is a reverse of evaporation and it is called as the condensation right after some time interval the equilibrium is established between the two phases of the substance that is the uh, evaporation and condensation evaporation 
is in equilibrium with the condensation condensation process liquid and its vapor phase becomes at equilibrium at this stage the rate of evaporation equals to the rate of condensation rate of evaporation is equals to the rate of condensation and the vapor pressure of the substance is exerted okay and we can define the vapor pressure definition of vapor pressure here pressure exerted by the gaseous state pressure exerted by the gaseous state of that substance when it is in equilibrium with with the liquid phase with the liquid phase this is the case or this is the definition of the vapor pressure okay in case of pure liquid in absence of the solute particle that is if we take the only solvent that is water or any acetone or ethyl acetate then the whatever the vapor pressure exerted by that molecule is due to the vapor pressure of only solvent molecule but the vapor pressure is changed if we mix the solvent in a solution now see in details now as we see if we take the only solvent molecule or the solvent in a container closed container then the surface of that liquid is uh, contain only the solvent molecule but if we add the non volatile solute molecule in it if we take the non volatile solute non volatile solute then the surface of that liquid is covered by the solvent molecule as well as the non volatile solute then the vapor pressure of the pure solvent is lowered because this is due to the fact that in case of the pure solvent its surface area is completely occupied by the volatile solvent molecule while in case of the solution of the non volatile solute its surface area is not completely available available for the volatile solvent but it is partly occupied by the non volatile solute jaise humne yahan pe diagram mein mention kiya hai hence the rate of evaporation agar surface kam ho gaya to rate of evaporation of the solution will be less as compared to that of the pure solvent previously jo pure solvent tha to surface pura solvent ne occupy kiya tha yahan pe and that's why the vapor pressure of solution is also lower than the pure solvent and uh, due to this the non volatile solvent or due to addition of the non volatile solvent the vapor pressure of the liquid is decreases we can write here due to addition of addition of non volatile solute vapor pressure of of solvent is decreases vapor pressure of solvent decreases now if if p1 0 is the vapor pressure of pure solvent pressure of 
pure solvent and P is is the vapor pressure of solution of non non hola tile non volatile solute then as we know the vapor pressure of the solution is decreases that is p is less than the p10 p10 is the vapor pressure of the solution uh, sorry pure uh, solvent it is greater and hence lowering in vapor pressure lowering of vapor pressure we can write lowering of vapor pressure is by delta p it is denoted by delta p is equals to vapor pressure of pure solvent minus the vapor pressure of the solution and it is decreased by somewhat quantity the difference between vapor pressure of pure solvent and the vapor pressure of solvent from the solution is called as a vapor pressure or lowering we can write the definition the difference between vapor pressure of pure solvent that is p10 and the vapor pressure of solvent from solution is called vapor pressure lowering is called vapor pressure lowering the next term is the relative lowering of vapor pressure relative lowering of vapor pressure for the given solution is the ratio of vapor pressure is the ratio of vapor pressure lowering that is delta p of solvent from solution solution to the vapor pressure of pure solvent vapor pressure of pure solvent that is p1 0 so we can write the relative lowering of vapor pressure of vapor pressure is equal to delta p upon p1 0 and we know the delta p is the p1 0 minus p upon p0 sorry p1 0 it is the relative lowering of vapor pressure okay the next important term in case of the uh, lowering of vapor pressure is the raoult's law raoult's law states that 
the partial vapor pressure of any volatile components of a solution is the product of vapor pressure of that pure components and the mole fraction of the component in the solution can write the partial pressure partial vapor pressure the partial vapor pressure of any volatile component component of a solution is the product of vapor pressure of that of that pure component and the mole fraction of the component in the solution the component in the solution this is the statement of rolls law the partial vapor pressure of any volatile component of a solution is the product of vapor pressure of that pure component and the mole fraction of the component in the solution so consider the solution containing two volatile component okay consider the solution containing two volatile component that is a1 and a2 are the two volatile component components of solution two volatile components of solution and its mole fraction for example x1 and x2 are the mole fractions of a1 and a2 mole fractions of the components fractions of the components respectively then let us consider let p1 0 and p2 0 with the vapor pressures of pure component a and b right vapor pressures of component a1 and a2 respectively and now according to the rolls law rolls law states that the partial vapor pressure of any volatile component of the solution is the product of the vapor pressure of pure component and the mole fraction of the component right then according to the rolls law first of all see p1 and p2 p1 and p2 are the partial pressures pressures of a1 and a2 in respectively okay now according to the rolls law partial vapor pressure this we can write here according to rolls law p1 is equals to p10 into x1 and p2 is equal to p20 x2 p20 x2 and the total vapor pressure total vapor pressure of the solution it is generated by pt it is the sum of the partial vapor pressures of the two component that is pt is equal to p1 plus p2 so we can write here as p1 0 x1 plus p2 0 x2 
as uh, we know that uh, in previous lecture we have seen the mole fraction concentration of a uh, concentration term that is mole fraction and as we know the sum of the mole fractions of all component is equals to 1 that is x 1 plus x 2 is equal to 1 or we can write from that x 2 is equal to 1 minus x 1. Hence, total vapor pressure of solution is equals to P 1 0 x 1 plus P 2 0. So, x 2 ki jo value hai yaha pe is first equation mein hum x 2 ki value 1 minus x 1 put up karenge yaha pe 1 minus x 1. Then we get the P 1 0 x 1 plus multiply by P 2 0 to the bracket. So, we get the P 2 0 minus P 2 0 x 1. So, if we solve this then we get the P 2 0 plus in this term P 1 0 x 1 and P 2 0 x 1 we get the x 1 as a common. So, P 1 0 minus P 2 0 into x 1. The solution which obeys the Raoult's law, this is the Raoult's law equation, you can call it as a total pressure of the solution, vapor pressure of solution is equal to this equation. Now, those solution obeys the Raoult's law equation over the entire range of concentration is called the ideal solution. Okay. The solution which obey which obeys Raoult's law over the entire range of concentration is called is called ideal solution is called ideal solution and if the solution does not obey the Raoult's law that solution is called as the non ideal solution those solution does not obey the Raoult's law equation it is called as the non ideal solution. Now, this is the case if the solute and solvent both are the volatile then this will be the equation. But if the solute is a non volatile, then what will be the Raoult's law equation? If the solute and solvent both are the volatile, then Raoult's law equation is P t is equal to P 2 0 plus P 0 minus P 2 0 into x 1. But if the solute one of the component is non volatile consider the solution of two component again see the Raoult's law for the solution of the non volatile solute consider the two components of the solution one is solute and other is a solvent that is A1 and A2. With mole fraction again a 1 ka jo mole fraction hai wo hai x 1 and is a x 2. But this time the component A 2 is non volatile component A 2 jo hai wo hai non volatile non volatile hence does not evaporate and does not contribute to the total vapor pressure of the solution. The vapor pressure of the pure component A 1 is P 1 okay. A 1 ka jo vapor pressure hoga yaha pe hoga P 1 0 and component A 2 ka jo vapor pressure hoga wo 0 hoga that is P 2 0 is equal to 0 because it is a non volatile one. Hence the vapor pressure of solution that is 
hence vapor pressure of solution is P T that is total pressure हमने जैसे इक्वेशन लिखा था पी टू जीरो प्लस पी वन जीरो माइनस पी टू जीरो इन टू एक्स वन बट बट पी टू जीरो इज इक्वल टू सॉरी हाँ पी टू जीरो इज इक्वल टू जीरो हैंस पी टी इज इक्वल्स टू जीरो प्लस पी वन जीरो माइनस जीरो इन टू एक्स वन एंड इफ यू सॉल्व दिस देन वी गेट द P one zero into x one. That is the pressure of the vapor pressure of the non-volatile solute is equal to the. Since the vapor pressure of solution of non-volatile solute is the product of vapor pressure of pure solvent that is P one zero and the mole fraction of the solvent that is x one, which is the Raoult's law. For two component, as we know, again the mole fraction formula for the two component, x one plus x two is equal to one. Hence, the x one is equal to one minus x two. Here, the x two is the mole fraction. of non volatile solute non volatile solute and it is not equals to 0 x2 is not equals to 0 it having some uh, some value hence hence x1 is less than 1 and hence the product that is P one zero into x one is always less than P one zero. Therefore, the vapor pressure of solution therefore the vapor pressure of solution that is vapor pressure of solution. Pt is always less than vapor pressure of the vapor pressure of the solvent. Okay. Hence, this proves that there is a lowering of vapor pressure of solution. There is a lowering of vapor pressure of solution. And if we plot the graph. if we plot the graph in between the mole fraction of solvent of solvent against the vapor pressure of solvent vapor pressure of solvent then the graph will be the straight line graph will be the straight line passing through the origin as a, here the x1 is equal to 0 in this point and at this point x1 is equal to 1 means x2 is 0 here and the x2 is 1 here right this will be the nature of graph okay and from that we can write the lowering of vapor pressure as we have uh, we have already study lowering of vapor pressure sure that is delta p is equal to p1 0 minus p put up the value of p p is the total vapor pressure of the solution that is p1 0 minus p1 0 into x1 in case of the 
solution of non volatile solute ok and if we solve this then common is the p 1 0 1 minus x 1 right. But again from the mole fraction equation 1 minus x 1 is equal to x 2 hence hence lowering in vapor pressure hence lowering in vapor pressure that is delta p is equal to p 1 0 into x 2 p 1 0 into x 2. Lowering of vapor pressure is the product of hence we can write from this equation that the lowering of vapor pressure is the product of vapor pressure of pure solvent and the mole fraction of non volatile solute dissolved in the volatile solvent to form the solution right. This is the uh, P 1 0 is the vapor pressure of the pure solvent and X 2 is the mole fraction of the non volatile solute dissolved in the solution. Thus the lowering of vapor pressure depends on the nature of pure solvent right. From this equation we can say that the lowering of vapor pressure depends on the nature of pure solvent and the concentration of solute in the solution right and the concentration of solution solute in the solution means the number of particles present in the solution okay. Now the relative lowering of vapor pressure. Now, relative lowering of vapor pressure that is delta P upon P 1 0 ok. We can put up the value of delta P over here. So, we get the delta P is P 1 0 minus P upon P 1 0 right or P 1 0 minus P is equals to what? P 1 0 into X 2 upon P 1 0 right. Now, P 1 0, P 1 0 it cancels. So, we get the X 2. Hence, the relative lowering of vapor pressure is equal to we can write here. Hence, the relative lowering of vapor pressure is equal to x2 that is delta p upon p10 is equal to x2 and already we have proved here that is delta p see here delta p is equal to p10 upon sorry p10 into x2. Hence this equation proves that the lowering of vapor pressure is a colligative property because it depends on the concentration of the non volatile solute. Hence, this equation proves that this equation this equation proves that equation A proves that the lowering of vapor pressure is a colligative property. Hence, equation A proves that lowering of vapor pressure is a colligative property is a colligative property because it depends on the concentration of non volatile solute that is X2. Next is the molar mass of solute and relative lowering of vapor pressure. For example, consider W2 gram is the solute weight of solute and M2 is the molar mass. molar mass of solute. It is dissolved in the W1 gram of the solvent. Okay. 
of molar mass m1 m1 is the molar mass of solvent okay so we get the solution hence number of moles of solvent that is n1 is a number of moles of solvent and n2 will be the number of moles of solute here okay then we can write the number of moles of solute and solvent as we know the formula that is number of moles of solvent n1 is equal to the weight of solvent upon its molar mass and the number of moles of solute that is n2 is equal to the weight of the solute upon its molar mass that is m2 and the mole fraction of solute mole fraction of solute that is x2 is equals to n2 upon n1 plus n2 this is formula we have uh, learned this formula in a previous lecture so we can write n2 is w2 upon m2 n1 is w1 upon m1 plus w2 upon m2 this will be the formula after solving this now see if we put this value that is x1 if we put the value of x1 in the previous equation that is we have the equation delta p upon p10 is equals to x2 we have this formula now is equal to x2 if we put the value of x2 in this equation then we get delta p upon p10 is equals to w2 upon m2 upon w1 by m1 plus w2 by m2 for dilute solution for dilute solution dilute means the concentration of the solvent is too low for the dilute solutions n1 that is number of moles of the solvent is very very high as compared to the number of moles of the solute hence n2 may be neglected hence n2 may be neglected so equation this equation b becomes so equation b becomes delta p upon p10 is equals to this is our uh, w2 by m2 is our n2 right if we neglect the n2 from the equation b then we get the delta p upon p10 is equals to w2 by m2 upon w1 by m1 hence is equals to w2 ye jo divide hai wo upar jayega to yahan pe m1 then w1 into m2 this will be our new formula if we know the masses of the non volatile solute and the solvent in a dilute solutions and by 
determining the experimentally the vapor pressure of pure solvent and the solution it is possible to determine the molar mass of non volatile solute can determine the molar mass of non volatile solute okay p 1 0 this is the formula this is the relation between the lowering of vapor pressure and the molar mass of the solute the relation between the vapor pressure of the lowering of vapor pressure of solution sorry solvent by non volatile liquid uh, non volatile solute and the molar mass of the solute uh, so if you like my uh, lecture then please share subscribe and uh, press the bell icon so whenever i add the new video you will get the notification thank you